Hello again, YouTube. This is The Truth Man. The channel is the No Matrix, No Simping, All Subjects channel. On this video, we're going to talk about failure and how a lot of people can't succeed because they're too scared to fail. They just want to play it safe every second because failure stings. So I remember when I was in high school, right? And when I used to play high school football, like we had a lot of good players, but we just got into this habit of losing. Like I was on some losing teams. So it's weird because my senior year, that's when we start winning a couple more games than we lost. Even though we still had a losing record, we were starting to win games. So it's like the next year after that, after I left, they started winning. They went on a, a streak and they had uh, several winning seasons after my class basically graduated because the guy did and uh, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you. I'm making a point here. The the players, I remember it was, you know, I remember their names and stuff like that. You know, because you know how you be at school and you be cool with people sometimes. This underclassmen, like you a senior, but you be knowing sophomores and stuff like that, juniors. So in practice... The JV squad used to go against us, right? They couldn't get a yard. They, I'm, I kid you not, we were stopping them like at the line of scrimmage every play. But I noticed how they was popping up, going right back to the huddle. They was going right back to the huddle. You know, they just kept coming at us and we just kept shutting them down. Then they finally scored. It was on a, a a punt return. And the guy who scored, I already knew he was going to be good because, you know, he was a pretty good player. Uh, he was starting on the right side. I was the left corner. He was the right corner. Uh, at first, I was free safety, but they switched me to corner because I was better uh, in coverage, like from, from the line of scrimmage. So... The corner that was there, he was better from far back, like coming up, making plays and stuff like that. So they switched our positions. And uh, the other corner, I already knew he was good. He was only a sophomore. He was starting. When he scored on that punt return, uh, he kind of scored on me, and people was uh, heckling me too. But... After they did that, like, they changed. Like, they went on the winning streak. Like, as a JV team, because, like, they was going against us. Varsity, and we was shutting them down. I mean, they had some fast dudes. Them dudes was coming. Boom. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. But when they scored, it seemed like, like I was, like, peeking at their practices and stuff. Like, man, these dudes going to be good. And when we all left and they became seniors, man, they won a division. <coughs> like three years straight. What is the point I'm making? The point I'm making is this. If you handle your failures the right way, your failures should make you hungrier for success. And that hunger is what's going to make you successful. See... I noticed like sometimes you had people got a lot of help. When you got a lot of help, you're not really all that hungry. But there's people out there that have failed in business, failed in school, flunked. I know people that flunked in school that graduated from college. Because if you handle your failures the right way, it'll lead to future success, I'm telling you. 
But some people, once they experience failure, once they experience like being homeless, they give up. They're, they're scared to try anymore. They just want to play it safe. They get a little piece of something and they want to just stop there. But I want you to know that in today's world, you can't play it safe because ain't no safe. Right now, as I'm speaking, you got people that's hiding in boardrooms trying to figure out how to make a digital currency, how to do things that benefit a group and not the people as a whole. And how they going to get people to accept it. See, digital currency, we don't need digital currency. Our currency is just fine. But my lips shining. They ain't white, y'all. They're shining. But they know, there's people out there that know that digital currency is the closest to slavery. Like they can literally control what you buy. All this credit score, social credit score, and digital currency, all that stuff is to control the masses of people. And so there are people out there that want you to give up. Because if you give up, it's going to be easier to control you when this time comes around. And you hear it from the prophet. If it comes around in our lifetime, everybody that's broke, they're going to be the first ones controlled. Well, for you to get this $2,500 a month and to be able to buy and sell, you got to take this into your... See what I'm talking about? How can you trust somebody that will starve you to death if you don't listen to them? It's going to be tears. That's what the Bible was talking about in Revelation when it said he'll wipe all the tears out of their eyes. This is what I believe based on my revelation, the mysteries revealed to me so on and so forth I believe the most high is going to when we get to heaven we still going to remember earth because remember they remember how they was remember how long before you avenge our blood he going to let you have selective memory he going to let you remember what he wants you to remember so I believe a lot of people, when they get before them, they're going to be crying like, what about my kids? Like, my kids still down there. You're going to wipe the tears out of your eyes. People going to know their kids is going to starve. And they're going to be forced to pick their faith or their kids. And some people are going to pick their faith. It's going to be, I'm telling you, man, ain't no chosen faith. It's the faith who believe in him above. And I'm going to show you why. Because all them people, remember the people with the palm branches that the scripture talked about? They all had different beliefs, but they had one thing in common. They was not finna go against the most high for nothing in this earth. And they made it because of it. It's going to be Jehovah Witnesses that say, I ain't taking that mark. It's going to be Muslims that say, I'm not taking the mark. Y'all ain't got me fooled with that Christianity stuff. And nothing against Christianity. A lot of people is in heaven right now. They held Christian beliefs. But if you expect me to believe that that's the only way people going to get there, then you must think I'm an amateur like these other dudes. And I don't care how many subs you got. If you think Christianity is the only way people going to make it. I question if the most high even revealing a whole lot to you. The mark of the beast is going. So you basically come on, man. You know what? I ain't going to stay on failure. I was finna go all the way on a whole nother subject. Let's get back to talking about failure. Like I said in the short. 
all these cute phrases, failure is not an option. But some of the most successful people of all time fail. They fail. People look at the Messiah, his life is a failure. Wasn't no failure. Look how many people made it through the things that he said. Wasn't no failure. But when he was on the earth, he only had 500 people following him. Everybody was with the Pharisee. That's how it be. The person that gets rejected the most is usually the, the real leader. And the most high had to show me that. Broke me down like a baby. If you ain't never getting rejected, man, you ain't the leader. Go sit down somewhere. The leaders get rejected, the real ones. Just like the Antichrist when he comes, the, the false messiah. The son of perdition. They all going to be like, he solves everything. He's the greatest. And this, we came up with this technology. You ain't come up with nothing. You still in the most eyes technology. That's the delusion. So. You got to. Treat failure. The right way. You go to prison. There's many people that went to prison. They got out and made something out of their lives. But if you still slick, you slick, slick man, Sammy, you basically setting yourself up for more failures. Just like the guy with the song Paint Pictures. I don't know. Now watch this. I don't even like a lot of this new music. And he has some cuss words and some choice words in that song. But one thing I could tell you, that dude put his heart into that song. That's why it went viral. And then he killed somebody, allegedly. And if you listen to what he was saying in the song, he was talking about how he was disappointed that he couldn't buy his mama what she wanted paraphrasing it this was his chance see you can't get in no habit of failing you gotta treat your failures like food you gotta eat them your failures should be you should be hungry and you should swallow, you know how you got to, remember how your mama told you, eat all your food on your plate. I know that's what my mother used to tell me. And used to purposely make stuff sometimes that I ain't like. Like, I noticed when I was bad in school, we always have stuff that I ain't like, like veal. Or she, I had these orange striped pants. I noticed, now that I'm thinking about it, I noticed that. When I act up in school, she would get them pants and make me wear them to school. And she would make like chitlins, cause I ain't never ate chitlins. She would make eggs. I'm not like the biggest, I eat them a little more than I used to, but I'm not like a big egg guy. She would make veal parmesan. I remember me and my sister was both throwing up. One of us was on the toilet, the other one was in the sink, just throwing up that veal. That stuff was nasty. She would make liver. And it's like, you would want to play the game, you would want to do this or that, so you eat it up. Me and my sister used to be looking at each other like my older sister. And then when my little sister came along, 
and she was doing it to her, I just used to be laughing, just laughing. Her little face was the same way. I thought it was hilarious. You know how you go back and forth with your little sisters and stuff? I just used to think that was so hilarious. My little sister used to come up with anything not to eat. So, but you got to eat your failures. So you can go to the next thing. My next thing was when I, when she was making stuff I didn't like. My next thing was I wanted to get back on the game. I wanted to go back outside. But what do people do now? No, that's not the solution. If you're dealing with bullies, if you're dealing with failure, you conquer it. Don't give up. And I'm not making fun of people who did that, but still, that's not the answer. So, failure is an option. It's an option that will lead to more success, success, or more failures. It just depends on you and how you deal with it. So when we used to play, it's like after that, every championship I won, it, I, I felt like I was in the NBA or something. Like I was in this, it was just a little league we was in, like basketball. And we went undefeated and we won the league. Man, it felt like, man, we drinking and stuff that night. I think I was like 21 or something like that, 20. We won the league. And it's like, just like even in like flag football, when I was a kid, all them years, my father was a coach. Average, 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 average. And it was kind of sad. But when we got, that last year I played, we, I was on the 49ers and we went undefeated and won the championship. And we was a bunch of little kids. We was jumping up and down. Boy, we was celebrating. Cause we had an all-star squad that year. We had those that I played against in high school and I knew about them because some of them went to like suburban schools and they like some of them dudes ended up going to college, playing football, big time high school players. But when we was on the 49, we won the whole thing. And it felt like just like Aaron Gordon. Did y'all see Aaron Gordon crying like a baby when he won? Because he was all those years on the Orlando Magic losing. You notice like the people who lost a lot, they be the most grateful for the for the wins. It's like Aaron Donald. All them years the Rams won good, then the Rams got good. They won the Super Bowl. People, most people, failure, once they succeed, it's more sweet. It's more sweet. And sometimes you would take it like they bragging, but it's not that they bragging. They just done failed, and they finally succeeding. It feels great. If, if you ever had bankruptcies, if you ever had repossessions, and you if you ever had, uh, you got evicted, you had foreclosures, all of that stuff, I'm telling you, if you read the backstories of some of the people who are rich right now, it was nothing but failure. Even Ben Franklin, Thomas Edison. Nothing but failure. He's crazy. Ha, ha, ha. Laughing at him. People be like, he said that before. He said that before. You setting yourself up again. 
No, what about he's not giving up? And now I, I also understand why people be, it's not that they stingy. It's they know how people treated them before they made it. And they know all the stuff people were saying and how, like, if you notice on Facebook, right? Like certain people get all the likes if they dress a certain way, if, if the bad boys, um, certain people. Anybody that's talking too much about religious stuff, deep stuff, they ain't gonna get no responses on a lot of their posts or, or minimal. These are the people that when they make it, all them people that was ignoring you, ignore them back. Are oh, you you holding a grudge? No. It's just you gotta the universe has a way of making people experience what they put out into the world. So the person that understands this like on YouTube per se when they do if they do get up there that's probably why Kevin Samuels wasn't collabing with nobody because he probably was looking at how when he when he first started people was, was ignoring him it was only a couple people that was dealing with him so on and so forth and he made it everybody Kevin Samuels this Kevin Samuels that and he probably remembered how they wasn't dealing with him. So, when you fail, you just gotta find that thing that's gonna lead you to, to success. I would say in terms of what we see, all this news, all the economy, use that as motivation. Let that make you more ambitious. Don't let it make you, well, the economy for the fail anyway. The market of beast, the market of beast, the market of beast. You don't know, the market of beast, we could be 50 years away from that. We could all be dead by the time that comes. The U.S. could not even be a country. People don't like us like that. You, know, well, you don't know when that market of beast is going to come. You got to, like he said, remember the five virgins, the ten virgins parable. Five of them wasn't ready because they thought they didn't need to be ready. The other five stayed ready the whole time. So the people who wasn't ready, they expected the people to help them that was ready. But the people they expected to help them, they were laughing at them. <laughs> Man, I'm finna have fun. I ain't doing that. They probably laughed at Noah too. We don't know how many times Noah tried to build that ark. No, the, for all we know, the way the Most High worked, Noah probably tried to build his own ark and failed. And then the Most High helped him build it. That's how it be, man, I'm telling you. Just like, like a hundred years from now, I guarantee you this right here. There's some of the people people listen to right now, they ain't gonna be listening to them 100 years from now. They, they gonna be finding people's stuff and comments and sayings that wasn't popular during their day. That's why if you making content, just keep making content. Don't worry about numbers. If, if you like making content, just keep doing it. You never know. Somebody, you might be helping somebody 150 years from now. I might be helping them. Like, a hundred fifty years from now, people are liable to view you more as a prophet 
than people in your generation. That's just the way it be. Anyway, thanks for watching.